In this video, we are going to define inner products. So say you've got a vector space V. An inner product is a function from the Cartesian product of V with itself to the real numbers. that satisfies certain conditions. The inner product is not written using the standard function notation. Instead, it's written like this. And the key thing to realize about the conditions I'm about to put down are that they're conditions satisfied by the dot product. The dot product is only defined on Rn, but it's a very powerful tool that we want to be able to use in other settings. So we take the things, the properties that the dot product has, and turn them into a definition. The inner product of U and V has to equal the inner product of V and U. This is a property the dot product has, that the dot product is commutative. The inner product of U plus V with the W has to equal the inner product of U and W plus the inner product of V and W. The dot product of U plus V with the W is the sum of the dot products. So once again, this is just a property of dot products being turned into a definition. The inner product of a scalar u and a vector scalar c and a vector u with a vector v is the scalar c times the inner product of u and v. If we've got a dot product
and we've got this scale there floating around. That is the scale there times the dot product. Finally, the inner pro product of any vector with itself is greater than or equal to zero. And the inner product equals zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. And once again, this is a property that dot products have. So in our products, are a generalization of dot products. We'll see some examples in later videos. For now, let me just make the observation that because inner products generalize dot products, if we have an inner product, we can define the norm because the norm of a vector is defined in terms of dot products. And we can um, define the distance between two vectors if we have an inner product because the distance is defined in terms of the norm and the norm is defined in terms of the inner product. And we can define orthogonality. because orthogonality can be thought of in terms of dot products. So for example, in a later video, we are going to define an inner product on the space of continuous functions. And once we've done that, we can ask how far functions are from each other. We can ask whether functions are at right angles to one another. Things like that. 